so the bedside troubleshooting can be either for the patient or it can be for the ventilator so suppose situation 1 the patient is desaturating on ventilator so there are two patients here so this is a i mean two monitors here this is a monitor suppose this is showing saturation of 85 and this is showing saturation of 99 so what is happening is suppose this is this is not written here i think the print is gone the saturation suppose is 85 here and the patient is desaturating whenever you find desaturation always look at the spo2 trace here the spo2 trace which is a blue line is not seen very well so you will think that the patient is desaturating but actually when you connect the spo2 properly and look into the trace it should be a sinusoidal pattern the patient has a saturation of 99 so before you label the patient as desaturating ensure a proper spo2 trace always saturation has to be with a proper trace interpreted with a proper trace so that is point number 1 so with the proper spo2 trace suppose if the patient is desaturating do not waste time in switching the site of spo2 probe the natural tendency is for doctors and nurses is to change the site from one hand to the other hand or from the hand to the ear lobes or to the legs so if patient is desaturating with the proper sinusoidal waveform in the saturation probe do not waste time in changing the site of spo2 probe and immediately act on the patient so what will you do and how will you act so patient desaturating on ventilator four conditions dope either the displacement obstruction pneumothorax or equipment failure displacement is the et tube could have got displaced it is an emergency situation the patient would have got obstructed with secretions pneumothorax is a possibility equipment failure most common reason will be obstruction with secretions that will be the most common displacement and pneumothorax is a very rare scenario equipment failure is quite possible depending on the ventilator which you have first our job is to differentiate patient problem from the ventilator problem so we love to isolate the patient problem from the ventilator problem so till now the ventilator is the one which has been giving the breaths and the patient is desaturating so what we will be doing is separate both of them so i'll disconnect the patient from the ventilator take the patient with bag hand bagging either it is an ambu bag or a flow inflating uh, bain circuit and give 100% oxygen with them give oxygen full flow 15 liters so for doing this you need to have a oxygen cylinder bedside again along with the airway equipment which you had in the bedside the oxygen cylinder should always be in the bedside for emergency situation so to disconnect bag with 100% oxygen once you bag them if the problem is with the ventilator this patient will improve because you have removed the patient from the ventilator and you are bagging your hand is acting as a i mean the bag is acting as a ventilator so that is called equipment failure so you will have to identify what is the problem in the ventilator so you will be bagging the patient and the saturation is improved the other person will slowly look into the problem with the ventilator and sort out the problem then after that you will connect the patient back to the ventilator suppose there is no improvement at all that means there is a problem with the patient so what all will you assess first while bagging you assess the chest rays and you look for bilateral air entry and you see if there is any difficulty in bagging and in case you have a etco2 as i already said entitled carbon dioxide is a gold standard and confirmatory to know whether it the tube is in the trachea or in the esophagus so you quickly if you have a etco2 to quickly connect it and see if the etco2 trace is present if the trace is present irrespective of the value that means your tube is in the trachea so your tube is in proper position there is nothing wrong with the tube it is not displaced suppose you don't have a etco2 trace or even if you have it you always look for poor bilateral chest rays so you found the chest rays is not very good but etco2 trace is present so that means the tube is there but it is not the air is not going in appropriately why because there is a lot of secretions which is obstructing the air from going in completely so and while bagging you will be able to feel the resistance you will not be able to bag freely so you immediately do a et suctioning so sometimes the suction catheter if the secretions are very thick they may not be able to pass in freely so then you put saline and try to do again suctioning so sometimes it may clear even if this if after saline insulation if the secretions don't clear then you give higher pressure force and open the 
and try to clear the secretions out. Suppose you eat CO2. So this is the protocol which you do for suctioning. I mean, how to overcome the ET tube obstruction. So next is, suppose your ET CO2 is present, trace is present. That means your this thing, endotracheal tube is in the trachea, but you feel one-sided air entry is less and the patient is crashing. So that means there is a pneumothorax. If the patient is very sick going into hypertension. That is probably a tension pneumothorax. And immediately, uh, then focus and see if there is any uh, <coughs> hyperresonant sound. Or if you have a bedside ultrasound, you can quickly screen ultrasound. If nothing is there, the patient is crashing, just put a needle in the second intercostal space connected to a water seal and look for air bubbling. If the patient is not very sick, not crashing, then maybe you can do an x ray and a blood gas to see what is happening. So, next is ETCO2 trace is absent. So, what is the interpretation? If the trace is not there, the ET tube is probably not inside the, definitely not in the trachea. So, that means it is displaced. So, when you back the patient, Again, there will not be any breath sounds at all. And the abdomen will start distending because it is probably displaced into the esophagus, made distend. And there will be no stiffness at all. Your bag will just collapse. So that means this is again an emergency. So a block or a, I mean the displaced ET tube, you just can't keep it in and assume that it is in. So just remove it out immediately and bag with 100% oxygen. So again, you take the face mask, connect it to a bag and then do a bag and mask technique. With 100% oxygen and look for the improvement in saturation. And what I would like to tell here is uh, do not panic at this time that sometimes some of you may not be able to intubate, maybe a difficult intubation. With If you bag and mask the patient appropriately, you can wait till the second rescuer or the senior person comes, even till 30 minutes, 40 minutes. So, intubation, if you do not intubate, it is okay. But you should learn the skill of bag and mask and continue to just bag till the next person comes. Even with just bagging, you can keep the child alive in such a scenario. So always just don't panic at the scenario and just keep doing bag and mask till the help comes. So same acute deterioration. Take on bag. If the patient improves, it is mission problem. If not, patient problem. Then you'll have to identify whether it is a Sometimes small, small problems like tube kinking, tube biting, mucus plug, I mean, which is due to secretions can be there. Or sometimes pneumothorax can be there. Or it can be as such a worsening lung problem. The patient as such is worsening. There is nothing acute which is happening. And there is over a period of time, it is gradually worsening. And always when a patient deteriorates, make it a habit, you do a blood gas and an x-ray. Should always be done. X-ray, blood gas, in adults, ECG, echo should always be done immediately. ECG especially. So when the patient deteriorates, in acute deterioration, suppose you have ruled out dope, till the patient has low saturation, then you assume it is probably due to worsening lung problem. Any worsening, as I said, you always do a chest x-ray and a blood gas.